Hey guys, Matthew Paris here. I'm here to uh, talk about my top 10 movies. Um, sometimes when I go out to eat, we'll talk about movies with my buddies and stuff like that. And they'll often ask me, you know, what's your uh, favorite movies? So I'm going to talk about it here. I thought I'd make a video of it. Um, so this is in no particular order. Uh, this, these are all American films. Um, no foreign films, no uh, animated films, unfortunately, on the top 10. Although one of my favorite anime movies is Shrek. The first one and uh, one of my favorite foreign films is uh, a movie from Indonesia called The Raid Redemption. It's a very good movie. It's a kind of a die-hard type movie um, and set in Indi Indonesia and uh, yeah so uh, good fight choreography in that movie. Some of the best action scenes I've seen in a long time in years. Uh, they did do a sequel to it but we'll talk about that in uh, another video or another time. Um, so let's get into it. This is in no particular order. Uh, we just, uh, except for maybe the first two movies. The first two movies are probably my favorite. The first movie on the list is The Godfather. Um, great movie, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, written by, the novel was written by Mario Puzo. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola provided the screenplay, and I think Puzo did himself. Uh, to me, it's a near perfect movie. The cinematography is great, the acting is great. Uh, great performances all around by Marlon Brando, James Caan, uh, the late great James Caan, Al Pacino. Um, yeah, I believe it also won uh, Best Picture at the Oscars in 1972. And uh, it's a great film, great cinematography. I highly recommend checking it out. It's a story of family. Uh, it's the mafia, but it's a story of family and uh, the struggles within the family. And... Um, you know the people who are the fa who's the family surrounded by the friends and, and people from outside sources. It is a great movie. Uh, it's a long movie. It clocks in about two and a half hours, about three hours. But I highly recommend checking it out. Um, the next one on the list, number two, is The Godfather Part Two. Uh, one of the best sequels of all time, in my opinion. It's also uh, I think Time Magazine's best sequel of all time, next to uh, Terminator Two: Judgment Day. Uh, two great choices two classics and um yeah it's a movie it's kind of a prequel and a sequel so it takes place years later after the first movie but also takes place years before the first movie so uh it's about the rise to power with uh the don vito carleone who will later become the don and uh robert de niro plays him plays a young marlon brando in the younger version in italy sicily italy and and whatnot uh, and then it shows the power, the rise to power with his son, Michael Carleone, in the years to come. Uh, it's a great movie. I uh, highly recommend checking it out. Great cinematography again. Coppola directs. Um, it won Best Picture also. I think it's the first sequel to ever do that. To win Best Picture. I think it's the only sequel that still holds that record to win Best Picture. I think it was 1974. And uh, I think Coppola won Best Director for that. And uh, so number three on the list is uh, we're gonna get into a little bit of Spielberg here, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Uh, great family movie, I think they br brought it back for their 35th anniversary, I think, I'm sure, maybe, I don't know. But uh, I think it's playing at the, one of the theaters up here next to my house, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good movie, good family movie. It's a story of friendship, a lonely boy becomes friends with, uh, with an alien. Uh, he's the only person he could trust, and uh, later on, you know, he's got an older brother. His older brother has more friends than he does. He's got a sister. Drew Barrymore plays his sister. It's a great movie, great family movie. I highly recommend every parent uh, show their kids that movie, and it's a, um, it's a real classic. Great performances all around. Um, the next one on the list is Raiders of the Lost Ark. We're at number four. Raiders of the Lost Ark. So, uh, Raiders of the Lost... Sorry, my phone just went off. Raiders of the Lost Ark is uh, very much an adventure movie. It's part of the Indiana Jones. It was part of the Indiana Jones trilogy at one point, ending with The Last Crusade in 1989. Uh, now, of course, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, I think, came out in 2004. No, I'm sorry. It was 2004. It was 2005. 2000. I don't know. But actually, it might have been 07. I think it was 2007. I don't know. We, we can look it up. But... Um, so yeah, Raiders Lost Ark, first time we've seen a, a movie where it was so much adventure. We had seen adventure movies before, but not nothing captured like that. Archaeologist goes on to dig to find the Ark, uh, ends up um, 
I think uh, again with the uh, with the woman he's known for years, it's a fall in love with her. Very much a romantic adventure type movie. Uh, great movie for kids. Great movie to uh, for anybody to see if they want a fun time for two hours. Uh, next one on the list. This one's a we're at number five. This one's a little bit more of an action movie. We are looking at uh, Die Hard, the original Die Hard. Great movie. Um, Starring Bruce Willis, young Bruce Willis. Uh, that movie is the one that really uh, took him took him on the map. And uh, Alan Rickman, the late great Alan Rickman, great character actor, played uh, many great villains. Uh, he was also in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. He was a sheriff of Nottingham, which was great. He was funny in that. He was a funny villain in that. This one's a little more serious. Um, so basically, this guy, this New York cop, goes to Los Angeles uh, to. Uh, spent some time with his wife who's now I think they're divorced so he take uh, she takes a job in Los Angeles he goes over there for Christmas and they kind of hate each other at first uh, terrorists take over a building they try to rob it try to rob the building and uh, I think for some bonds or something and it's been a while since I've seen the movie so uh, some bonds and he's in there at the Christmas party he gets out they take hostages I think on like the 13th floor and it's a great action movie. Some of the best action sequences I've, I've ever seen in a movie. Um, yeah, very well written movie. Very well written movie. I think John McTiernan, McTiernan wrote it. Um, it's based on a book called Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe. Uh, it's a good book. It was originally supposed to be a uh, sequel to Commando, that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, movie that came out, I think, in 1984 or 1985, somewhere in there. Um, but they turned it around and said, "Hey, we'll, we'll do this as a uh, standalone film." So uh, I heard the I've never I never read the book, but I heard the book is pretty good. It's called "Nothing Lasts Forever." It's by Robert Thorpe, and uh, yeah, it's good. It's a great, great movie. Great cinematography. The action sequences are great. Um, very well told. The story unfolds very well. You have a first act when he gets to the building. You have a second act, and then you have the third act, the final act, where uh, Hans and uh, and the hero, the heroine, um, uh, I just drew a blank, what's his name? John McClane, uh, you know, have a final showdown, his wife's right there and, and, and stuff. So, great movie, a lot of twisted turns in that movie. They talk to each other, they kind of play a cat and mouse game. It's, it's a movie with many layers. So, highly recommend checking out the original Die Hard. They did several sequels. They were also very good. Uh, Die Hard 2, Die Hard with a Vengeance, and uh, I think there was uh, Live Free or Die Hard, that was the fourth one, and then the fifth one was A Good Day to Die Hard. So they just keep milking the cow. Um, yeah, so our number six one on the list is Jurassic Park. We're going back to Spielberg. I remember seeing the movie in 1993. I saw it with my buddy Josh. We saw it at the Cineplex Odeon uh, in Houston, which was off Westheimer at the time. We uh, It was cool. It was playing. I remember it well. It was there was. I remember. Uh, I went with his parents, and uh, we. Uh, I remember driving up, and the parking lot was packed. Cars everywhere. There was a line out the door, outside the front. Um, the theater doesn't exist there anymore. There's a bunch of uh, condos and apartment buildings that sits on top of it. They tore it down. But uh, great movie. Uh, I remember sitting in the uh, standing in line. Had my little popcorn. I had my uh, T Rex Big Gulp with me, which was fun. And we went in. It was a packed house, so we went in and we watched the movie. Jurassic Park uh, is a great film, another Spielberg classic. Came out in the summer of 1993. It's uh, based on a novel by Michael Crichton. The book in the movie, I've read the book. The book in the movie is pretty different, you know, as far as the story goes. So, um,. The same, it's the same story, but it's just it's changed around quite a bit. You know, Dr. Ellie Sadler was actually an intern. Um, Alan Grant was much older. Uh, Dr. Malcolm, uh, Jeff Goldblum played him. He was uh, he was still kind of a rock star scientist. So they got you know they got that right from the uh, from the movie and the book. But um, yeah, no, it's great. It's great. I thought the changes they did was was really well done. You know, Ellie Sadler and Alan Gray in the movie are, are have become a love interest, where in the book they don't. Uh, she is an intern, she's there on assignment, and they go to the island to see what this is. Uh, great movie, great book, great cinematography, great ending. Uh, it stand the test of time. There have been several sequels to it, you know, especially Jurassic World. And uh, yeah, it's a great movie. So where are we at now? We're at number eight. Number eight on the list 
is, and this is a, a great movie, it is uh, one of my favorites I saw in high school. I was totally uh, blown away by it. Fight Club, David Fincher's Fight Club. David Fincher is actually one of my favorite directors, favorite filmmakers. Uh, he does very dark stuff, but he uh, does it pretty well and uh, tells the story well. So let's talk about Fight Club. Fight Club is on my list. It's number eight. Fight Club is um, it's a movie when I first saw it, I wasn't expecting too much from it. I had not read the book at that time. The book is pretty short. It's 250 pages long. It's by Chuck Palahniuk. It was a movie that uh, you, you go and see it for the first time. Like every Everybody should watch that thing uh, for a first time. I mean, I would love to go back and have never watched it and see it for a first time. Because when you're watching it for the first time, you're like, wow. Um, somebody actually uh, you know, got this right. If you listen to an interview with Chuck Palahniuk, he talked about the the, mate, the writing of the book, and he said, uh, you know, there were a lot of women movies coming out at that time. You know, the Joy Luck Club that had to deal with, uh, you know, women's women and their emotions, and and uh, you know, just a lot of, a lot of uh, you know women films films that are are uh, made towards women. And he said we never really saw a guy movie, you know, except for maybe an action movie like, like a Die Hard, but we we haven't seen a, a guy movie where they deal with their emotions and they deal with their emotions by fighting, which is uh, I agree with him on that. So um, so yeah, Fight Fight Club was a great movie. I remember watching it. Great cinematography, great direction. Brad Pitt uh, gives a great performance. I did not see the twist coming where he's not really there at towards the end in the third act. Um, you find out that you know Brad Pitt uh, is a figment of this guy's imagination, and we never hear Edward Norton's character. It, you know, he says his name is Cornelius, and it's like that in the book. We never know who his name is. He's listed as narrator, but um, you know, he, he's bored. He goes around. He's trying. He goes around to these different self-help groups. Um, he meets with Marla, and uh, they become friends. And he kind of creates this this uh, guy from his imagination. And he goes off on this whole thing, and he talks to himself a lot. And it's kind of a kind of a weird movie, kind of a but it's a fun movie, very well made movie. I didn't see it coming when I saw the when the twist happened. And uh, yeah, great movie. All right, number nine on the list. We're almost there. Number nine on the list is uh, I'm going to do a sci fi movie. It is Blade Runner, the original 1982 Blade Runner. Um, great movie. When you first saw that, now I was I was like. I don't know, one years old when that movie came out. So um, I don't remember it at all being in theaters. I do remember seeing it on VHS copy tape, I think when I was in middle school. And um, great movie, great visuals, very dark sci-fi movie, kind of, kind of a almost shot, almost like a, uh, kind of, I don't want to say B movie, but kind of a uh, very different, very stylized, but shot very dark, almost like in the, in the vein of The Crow, which came years later, but Blade Runner did first. It's about a guy, a cop, who goes around uh, killing what he calls replicants, and um, those are machines who are who have broken the law or kind of taken over. So you have humans and machines, and it's in the not too distant future. You have cars flying around. It's pretty cool to watch. The visuals are amazing. Um, who knows? We might be headed that way soon. Uh, <laughs> I don't like to think about that, but uh, yeah. So. Blade Runner, it's a great movie. I did see the sequel. It was fun. It's a little overly long, but it was good. Uh, number 10 on the list. Uh, this is the final one. And this one is... Uh, well, I have two, actually. There's The Silence of the Lambs, which is another great movie. Uh, Thomas uh, Harris wrote the book on that. Guy actually went to Baylor. Guy's undergrad at Baylor in English Lit. And uh, Jodie Foster does a great job as Clary Starling. Great movie, um, great police procedural movie. It's a it's a movie with many layers. It's a gothic horror movie. It's a police procedural movie. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's a uh, it's a great movie. I enjoy watching that movie. It's a fun movie. If it's on sometimes on TV, AMC plays it quite a bit. I'll 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 flip the channels late at night and watch a little bit of it while I'm doing something else or just kind of check in on it. And uh, I think the tenth one would probably have to be um, another thriller called Seven. Uh, I remember seeing this movie, I think, with one of my, my football buddies. I think in, I think it was, what was it, elementary school? No, it was the middle school. It was middle school, sixth grade. We were in middle school. Yeah, so I went to see it with a couple of my buddies, uh, my football buddies, 
and uh, you know the whole head in the box ending and and that was shocking we didn't see that coming very dark film but very good film another police procedural um, yeah it's a different kind of police procedural we never seen a movie a thriller where the killer turns himself in at the end of the, at the towards the end of the movie because there's actually another 20 minutes left of the movie where he goes off and and they have to find the last uh, the last uh, crime so uh, it's a movie based on the Seven Deadly Sins, but great movie. Brad Pitt gives a great performance, and then Morgan Freeman gives a great performance in it. Uh, very another David Fincher movie. I think it was the second film. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That's my top ten favorite movies. Uh, maybe I'll do another video talk about the top twenty. But that's my top ten, and that's it, guys. Uh, hope you guys have fun. I'll talk to you guys later. All right, bye.